Welcome back to our second video in our bathroom series where we're turning a two-piece into a three-piece. Today we're doing one of the most suggested videos that I've ever gotten, and that is how do you install a shower base? So here we go. I'm going to give you my 35 odd years of experience. We're going to go through a few different options here. First rule, you've got to have your subfloor deck clean and ready to go. That means this flooring is in the way and it's glued down. God bless them. Oh, there's two layers even more. I think when it comes down to it later on, instead of peeling all these flooring off, I'm probably gonna just add some floor leveler and then put on my next floor because this is a real pain in the butt. We'll see how well it comes off. There we go. This is gonna happen, right? You're gonna get layer on layer. Hell, I even preach it, you know? A lot of times, putting down a second layer of floor on an original layer is the easiest, most efficient way of getting the job done. You just got to get the right tool for the job, and this knife isn't it. Look at this. We got years of buildup. It's actually a nail. Now, in this situation, I'm actually adding more space to the room. And if you have not seen the first video yet, please do. This is the end wall of the original bathroom. This is all an extension, okay? And no matter how hard you try when you're building and you're adding another floor, you're not gonna get it perfectly level, which means we're going to have to install this pan into something, all right, that it sits on that we can then level the pan into and let it dry overnight. And my favorite product for that is not a thin set. It's called Sand Mix, okay? It's in the concrete aisle at your local building store. And when you mix the sand mix up, you mix it nice and soupy. You travel it out like you would thin set. You set the pan into it. And then we're just gonna use a rubber mallet to tap it level. All right, this is simple. You're gonna need a nice light aluminum level so you're not manipulating the pan while it's drying. Right now it's showing pretty darn close to level, so that's good. And remember our goal is perfectly level in every direction. So when we go to install the rest of the kit, it is really simple. Okay, so one of the things you're gonna need, guys, is you're gonna need your drain, okay? This is key. Always having everything on site before you begin your project means you have access to all these elements so you don't have to do things twice. Now this shower ring gets installed to the pan in advance of plumbing. And remember, this cardboard ring is vital. It's one of the most important parts of this whole assembly. This is a wax slip ring, which allows this torquing motion to slide on the cardboard. Without the cardboard, the gasket, under pressure, would go like this, and it would buckle. Okay, so this cardboard ring keeps that buckling action from happening. It's also on the dry side of the shower base, so you got nothing to worry about, okay? And you see this here? Nowadays, what we're using is a clear silicone bead on here, and we're compressing that into the shower base. We're gonna finish this assembly, and before we can attach it to the shower base, we gotta mark our hole. Now, all this does is it tells us where the hole is. Okay, it doesn't tell us how big it is. And this is the key. So, now we're gonna take this. We're gonna take this ring off, okay? And we're gonna set it where the hole is. And we're gonna cut our hole bigger than the ring. And here's why. Okay, first of all, let's cut, let's, let's mark out the ring. And then I'm gonna show you the size of the hole that you want is about another half an inch wider. Okay, this ring is not attaching anything to the plywood. It's simply attaching the drain to the pan. That's all it's doing. All right, so give yourself a little bit of room because when you go to put the pan in, you're gonna be on an angle, you're gonna be fussing around, maybe your measurements weren't perfect, maybe your cut's not perfect. Give yourself a little room to play, okay? Next thing we do is we gotta drill a pilot hole and then we're gonna use our jigsaw to cut it out. Yeah, that's not the most ideal bit, but it was the closest thing I could find at short notice. <laughs> Ah, uh, there's more than one way to do everything, eh? Okay, let's get this package open. We need a jigsaw blade. 
whenever you're changing blades, make sure it's not plugged in, right? I mean, I'm not big on safety, but I'm not stupid. There we go, okay? Now we're good. How handy is this, eh? Yeah, in another video, we're gonna show you what we're gonna do with that power in the bathroom that's totally illegal. Um, and because I built this myself, I know how much room I have to play with. If you don't, consider getting a hole saw, like a three inch, okay? And drill from the tops. You're sure not to go puncture any water lines. Yep, it's that easy. You might as well keep it nice and clean because garbage can get underneath some of that pan and then that'll set the height for the rest of this thing to be leveled to. You'll just drive yourself crazy. Okay, so now what we want to do is get our pan and our white silicone. This is a little bit tricky and you gotta have your wits about you. What I like to do is add the silicone to this ring here, okay? Right on the inside of that groove. And it can be white or clear, as long as it's for kitchen and bathroom. Personally, I love the new Flex. This is the 302. It's available on Amazon sometimes. And not carried at the local building store. Um, you'll find that the Home Depot is under contract with GE. Lowe's, I don't remember. I don't shop there too often. Not because I don't like Lowe's, I just, I'm no Home Depot because Lowe's came to our market late. But this one here, I get at my friends over at Dragona. If you're from Ottawa and you're looking for quality supplies for your flooring and plumbing and tile, then go there because they got the best of the best. Okay, that's where the pros go to shop. All right, here we go. Now, one more thing we got to do. I got to get my really big pair of vice grips and I want to get uh, a tool, a couple of screwdrivers in here that I can twist contrary to the twisting on motion. Silicone is going to get me a great seal, but one more little tiny squeeze makes the difference between having an air bubble where the water can get through or not. Okay, so I got this monster crescent wrench here. I just love this thing. Okay, and that gives me all the power I need. So you got to pop this off. This thing here is kind of like, there's really nothing here that you can attach anything to to hold it in place, which is one of the reasons why we're using the silicone, okay? So the best plan for you is just to hold this with your thumb. <sighs> Get this big wrench on here. I'm really just trying to hold this still while I'm threading, okay? And if you can get a quarter turn out of that, now you can be confident that your silicone is going to be nice and dry. All of this assembly is for connecting the plumbing at a later date. All right, now that the drain is installed, let's get the pan put in position. There are a couple of different scenarios that you're going to run into. One is you've already got a plumbing pipe in the floor. If you already have a pipe coming up through the floor, then what you want to do is measure off to where it comes into this. This particular drain, I'm just gonna show you real quick. This is like a key, and it un undoes the drain, okay? So this rubber gasket is designed to go over top of the ABS pipe that comes through the floor. And so you can actually set this pan in place over top of the ABS, level it, forget it, wait till the next day, then you come back, you can slide this back over top of it, and then you can add the ring, which completes the compression, which forces the gasket so tight against the ABS that water can't get out. Okay, that's basically the concept. We're gonna demonstrate this a little later in the build. That'll be in video number three, but today we're just gonna get this pan set. So don't worry about it, okay? This is all good. I'm gonna add my plumbing later. We're gonna be adding a sauna pan water and a removal system, and that'll be great. But now we wanna just double check that we can set it in place. No obstruction, good. Now I'm confident to mix my sand mix because we don't have to wait for this to dry in order to mix our sand mix and get this installed. This is my patented system for putting in shower pans. Okay, take a marker, trace on the floor the size of your shower pan. Try not to get black marker all over your white shower pan. This is just so that you're not putting cement all over the entire room and having to clean it up later. Okay, now, next, remove it from the area because we need to mix the sand mix now. Oh, 
Okay, now, um, sand mix is not concrete. It's mostly sand. It's just a much thinner, smoother way to do this, right? It's perfect for setting shower pans. It rep recommends four liters of water for one bag. I'm not using anywhere near a bag. I just need a little bit. I've probably put too much water in this pail already. And yes, this is a little bit of silica dust, okay? But you know what? A little bit of anything once in a while isn't gonna kill you. So let's knock it all freaked out in the comment section about, oh, silicosis. All right, I'm not working in the factory. I don't need an N95 mask for mixing one little pile of this stuff once in a blue moon. All right, I'm gonna need a ton more. I really use way too much water. Great. Like any of these products, you'll get to a point and be like, oh, I shouldn't have put that last teaspoon in because then it just got solidly thick. Yep. Really, you can forget the measurements because we're looking for a consistency. And when I get it, I'll show you what it is. <laughs> and then you'll know what to look for for yourself, all right? I think we're there. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. So you can tell it's it's got some substance, but it doesn't peak. Not like thin set. Okay, nope. Just trying to clean that out. There we go. Okay, let's just show you what this looks like. So when you're laying these pans and you look at this webbing on the back, you would think, wow, there's a lot of direct transfer of load. But that is dependent on the surface being completely flat. This is designed to go on a perfectly flat surface, which doesn't exist when you build with wood. So what we're using is, we're using sand mix underneath here, because it's not enough substance that it's gonna hold up against all these points of contact, but it's enough substance that it'll, it'll bond and balance out as it fills some of these gaps up, okay? So, instead of using thin set, like you would for cement, we're simply gonna use this, and we're gonna travel it out Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so when you're traveling sand mix, this is different than thin set. It doesn't peak the same. You don't have as much working time. And our goal isn't to raise up the shower pan. It's to have something to set it into. Okay. See this? Something to set it into so that we can then take the mallet and force it into this thin set or sorry, into the cement and get a nice base, especially where people are walking. So we're gonna get it across the front. We're gonna make sure that all around the drain, we have a little bit of extra material. Now we're gonna set our shower pan into position without sliding it, all right? First thing we're gonna do is check our level. The back corner goes down Make sure it's the same. It's the same in both situations. All right, so without touching the pan, I'm gonna just take my mallet. There we go. That's a hell of a lot better. We'll see how we're doing left to right. And the left side here, I wanna have it go down a bit. Check it again. Wow, that is almost perfect. Amazing. Now, there's two reasons why we want this perfectly level. One is the door kit will install so much easier, right? Remember, we're talking about glass panels and prefab everything. There's no tile here. Number two, this pan is designed to move water to the middle of that hole from all four corners, but it only works if it's installed level. If you're out one degree, you're gonna have pools of water. You're gonna get staining in your shower pan. It's gonna be nasty. Now that this is installed, I'm telling you right now, do not touch it. <laughs> the secret to success here is getting it perfect. Leave your level on here so everybody knows that it's, okay? Lock the door, um, you know, set a trip wire with a Claymore mine, whatever you gotta do. Don't let anybody touch this darn thing until the next day. Whew, we'll see you in the morning. All right, here we are guys, it's next morning and the shower pan's done. Now check this out. No deflection, no squeaks, no creaks, 
no rocks, no bumps, solid as a rock. That is the difference between ones that float around and have a lot of movement and the ones that you set in the sand bed. It makes all the difference. That's really the biggest trick. A couple more things we're gonna to wanna to go through though, okay? One, I wanna talk about the end from the beginning a little bit and give you a little knowledge as to what's gonna happen here. So we're gonna be finishing off the walls here with drywall. And I wanna just talk about this integrated tile flange here for a minute, all right? And you'll see that in most cases, half inch drywall, is going to be up against a 3 8 flange, okay? And that's it. And then over top of that, when you're finishing, you're going to get a polystyrene wall that goes all the way down to this point here. And this can be installed with adhesive. So what we want to do now, just to guarantee that not going to have any problems, is secure this to the studs. These screws pre self-drill, okay? It's going to pull and then this is going to be flush with the polystyrene the base all right so that when you bring the wall panel down everything is going to be fine okay now some materials out there they're not as flexible as the polystyrene base okay and so in those cases you're going to have to do different things in the videos coming up we're going to be putting on the waterproof drywall okay and i'm going to show you a technique called wet shimming i'm going to do it on this wall Basically what that is, is if you're in a scenario where your pan isn't moldable and adjustable to take that screw and deflect, you can wet shim and then put your wall in front and then you can use a rubber mallet to make everything perfectly level. Let it dry and set up because not everybody's coming back after installing a shower pan using the, the polystyrene walls. A lot of you are going to be going with tile or different materials and you need a perfectly flat wall. So we're going to show you a couple of tricks in the video coming up. But right now I'm just going to finish screwing all this in and then I've got two studs over here that are actually got a pretty good gap. And traditionally, what we do is we take a shim, and we put the shim in and add a screw, okay? But like I said, there's three solutions. You can shim and screw, you can wet shim, or you can do what I'm gonna do here in just a second. Uh, let me just get these here. And that is this. Let me just come through my wall. If you've got the flexibility, where you can get your hammer out. Remember, we nailed all this together. And these nails have got some flexibility. And you can hammer that stud right into position. And then all you gotta do is throw a screw in it just to give it a little bit more stability from moving around. And then I can throw my screw in there. Okay. Now remember, it doesn't matter what kind of pan you're using. Whether it's super strong or not, you can always benefit from adding the sand mix. When you're dealing with wooden houses, nothing's ever level, nothing's ever flush. Having a few tricks up your sleeve makes all the difference to a good success. Cheers.